Okay. Minister, thank you so much for your time today. Of course, uh, we have seen this very strong relationship between the U.S. and Brazil, an even stronger relationship after President Bolsonaro's very close relationship and friendship with President Trump. Will any of the impeachment drama that's happening in Washington right now take the focus away from the bilateral relationship? No, I don't think so. We're building a really robust relationship with very deep roots in our interests and also in our values and uh, in the friendship of the two leaders. So it's really a very diversified, very robust. I don't think that can be affected by internal uh, discussions like this here, like discussions that we have every day in, in Brazilian Parliament, uh, not about the same issues, but also we have a very uh, hot political temperature, which is good. It's, it's a democracy there. It's a democracy here. That's normal. This, this doesn't impact. We have, of course, the relationship with the U.S., which is huge, but Brazil also has a very strong trade relationship with China. How do you balance these out when you are amid a trade war between these two? Exactly. Well, so far, uh, we uh, only enhanced our relations with both. We didn't uh, suffer uh, any, uh, any backtracking in any way in, uh, in any of those two very important relationships because of that. Of course, of course, we look at that with a lot of attention. We would like to see the world as a level playing field for trade, for investment. But uh, as it is now, we are increasing our, our trade ties and investment ties with the U.S. and with China at the same time. Uh, they are concentrating in different sectors. Our trade with China is more on uh, agriculture, uh, agricultural products. The United States is more concentrated on, on manufacturing. We have uh, lots of uh, manufacturing investment from America in, into Brazil. From China, it's more into uh, infrastructure. Uh, so we totally balance those together. The U.S., though, is asking its allies to be wary of Chinese technology. Would Brazil consider restricting Huawei, for example? Well, uh, it's a very sensitive I issue. We know how important uh, the next uh, generation of Internet, 5G, will be. Uh, we uh, want to look at that carefully, not only at Huawei, at any of the uh, prospective providers for uh, our system to see if they, uh, what they can offer in terms of uh, across, uh, across the board, just not only just quality, but also uh, security and all the... Uh, uh, features of their systems. So we have to look into that, not because this is Huawei or other companies, but because of the uh, goals we have, which is to have a uh, effective, uh, efficient system, also uh, which is uh, safe, which provides uh, guarantee. So that's uh, what, how we're looking at it. But U.S. officials have now warned that they could even restrict intelligence sharing with these countries if they use Huawei equipment. How do you respond? Yes, well, we'll have to uh, to keep our, our dialogue on that. We, uh, of course, we value. Are you having those dialogues right now? We are. No, we're talking with the United States, not not precisely about this. I mean, we uh, have uh, very important uh, intelligence relations, uh, and we want to to keep that, of course. So uh, everything we uh, we take everything into account. But uh, I mean, we um, also um, talk with uh, our, our friends in in China. We uh, want to. Uh, to hear uh, uh, everyone. But uh, I think the important thing is that we uh, don't want to, uh, let's say, to discriminate any, uh, any company. We just want to see what really are the, the challenges that uh, the, this technology can bring and how to address them. Do you have a set strategy what you would do next if this trade war continues and mm. Huawei is still at the focus and center of these tensions? Well, uh, we hope this doesn't last for, uh, for a long time because uh, we uh, would like uh, the whole global economy to, to, to grow and to create new opportunities. And uh, exactly in the moment where Brazil is getting there with much more engagement in the world in terms of trade, investment, and economic presence. So, but uh, we have to, to live in the world as, as it is. We have to, uh, to see what uh, opportunities are there, what opportunities emerge from the, uh, this shifting uh, situation. We uh, totally uh, understand, I think, the, um, uh, the U.S. side on this. We try to understand also the, the Chinese si uh, side. We uh, think all countries are trying to, to defend <laughs> their interests. Like so do you have like a timeline? Because yeah. the Huawei will want to get involved yeah. in your infrastructure and, and your communication system. Yes. Yeah, probably uh, some, uh, sometime next year we'll uh, 
will uh, open the uh, uh, the process for uh, the, the the providers that will will be in our in our system, and uh, we need to devise that in a way that will be, as I said, uh, conducive to uh, to efficiency and and safety of the system. As of now, Huawei, for example, is very much present in uh, in the previous generations uh, in Brazil. A very good partner. Uh, other partners are also excellent for us. So uh, the timeline is still not very precise, but uh, sometime next year, I think we'll mm. start to deal with uh, that sort of thing. So will that be discussed when President Bolsonaro goes to China actually next month? Yeah, we uh, have a very strong agenda uh, in the whole uh, economic uh, spectrum. Uh, not necessarily this, because we still haven't uh, opened our, our process to select uh, the company or companies that we are going to work with. So uh, it's maybe early to, uh, to talk directly about this issue, because we still don't know exactly what conditions we're going to we're going to put there. But uh, we have an immense agenda in, uh, in China on infrastructure investment, like I said, for example, the trade. We really are trying to expand uh, our trade in agricultural products that is already very robust. We want to, to diversify and increase it. Uh, so there is a, a technology innovation dimension that goes beyond the question of uh, 5G. So there's a lot to talk. Uh, Do you have uh, any yeah. big announcements that you can tease at the moment that probably will come next month? Uh, well, a few. Uh, uh, I think it's something in, in this uh, infrastructure area will be uh, at, at the core in terms of, uh, of Chinese investment in, in Brazil, which is very, uh, very important for us. We uh, uh, inherited from previous uh, administrations uh, a lot of uh, a, a strong lack of investment in infrastructure. Brazil needs to catch up in that area. So any investment is welcome. Energy as well, uh, things like uh, lines of transmission, that sort of uh, that sort of sector. So uh, I think we could expect something there uh, in that way. And also, I hope so, <laughs> something in terms of uh, new markets for our agriculture products there. We have uh, seen, of course, uh, these. Uh, ongoing issues with China even before uh, President Bolsonaro took office. And during his election campaign, he was pretty critical of the Chinese dominance in key sectors in Brazil. Has the administration's view changed and evolved since then? Yeah, basically uh, what we see is that we, we need investment from every source in Brazil. Uh, for uh, the, uh, the lack of investment in previous administration that I talked about, especially in infrastructure, and also because uh, we uh, want to change the, uh, we're changing the whole philosophy of the economy from a state-centered economy to a real market economy. So we need uh, more private investment, or, or from, from uh, inside or from abroad. We cannot rely on uh, public investment anymore to, to build or rebuild our infrastructure. So uh, our realization is that we need investment from, from everywhere, so Chinese investment is welcome. What we need is more investment uh, from other sources as well, and not to uh, have any problem with the Chinese investment itself. When it comes to economic relations, right now we are seeing that perhaps Brazil may be in a, a precarious position with European nations when it comes to the European Union and the South American Customs Union Mercosur, that mm -hmm. trade deal that do you see that trade deal at risk right now because the Europeans are rejecting Brazil's environmental policies? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't see that uh, at risk. Uh, there's very strong uh, interest, economic interest, and also political interest from both sides uh, on the agreement. Uh, here in New York, I have been talking with uh, ministers from different European countries, even countries that uh, in, sometimes seem to be uh, whose public opinions seem to be critical of the agreement, and everyone agrees that. This is a strategic agreement. I want to, to push forward with that. What uh, you see is uh, because of some misinformation in the media in Europe regarding the uh, environmental situation in Brazil, our policies is some sort of uh, uh, ill will from the part of uh, sectors of the public opinion. And we want to address that. We want to sit with uh, European leaders, both uh, from the individual member countries and the European Union itself. Also talked with uh, uh, ministers, representatives of the European Union so here. Who have you talked to? Uh, to the, the current uh, foreign minister, Federica Mogherini, to the uh, coming foreign minister, uh, Josep Borrell, with the uh, trade commissioner, uh, Cecilia mm -hmm. Malmström. And I, I talked with uh, ministers from, from different countries, like Germany, Ireland. 
and uh, have other bilaterals with uh, European ministers. And uh, there's this convergence that what we need is to get more information to, uh, to the public, even to, to the leaders. Sometimes I think European uh, leaders work uh, on top of uh, bad information, and that's what uh, rely, uh, relays uh, uh, bad information to the to the public. So we need to sit together and in any format, in any geometry, and show what's the reality. Uh, it's not it, what it looks like, and to show the quality of our environmental policies, our commitment to environmental protection and conservation, and also ideas to improve that. Uh, in cooperation with European countries or other countries. We're devising new, uh, new funds for sustainable investment in the Amazon, for example. This, by the way, I think can create huge opportunities for, for investors uh, across the globe. Uh, so it, I think it's to, to show that reality that we, that's what we need to do. So when can we expect those uh, leaders to sit down? Well, uh, who and who and yeah. Now I'm talking more about uh, something more on the technical level or, or ministerial level, but not necessarily the, uh, the, the, the leaders. Uh, so we uh, want to devise those mechanisms, send our people to not only foreign ministry, also environmental, uh, environment ministry. Uh, the timeline? Yeah. Oh, very shortly, the next few weeks, few months. To uh, we uh, we are totally convinced we uh, have uh, sound policies and the situation is totally under control regarding the fires in the Amazon, for example. We just want to show that, to show the, all the satellite data, to show uh, and to also explain uh, uh, the way we have not changed any piece of legislation for environmental protection, and that we have even new ideas for that. So that's uh, what you need to do uh, to, to uh, let's say, dispel those doubts that exist. And just finally, you continue to talk about the uh, misinformation out there. Are you concerned about Brazil's image given the Amazon fires? Yes, because it's a uh, wrong image. I mean, we uh, have this uh, very uh, important set of uh, new policies opening to the world, uh, opening the economy, uh, modernizing the economy, and uh, uh, also new ideas for the environment. As I said, we need to create uh, sustainable jobs for the people in the Amazon. This is going to lead to much better conservation of the forest. And uh, this is not going through. We wouldn't need to get that through to the people. But are you concerned that perhaps President Bolsonaro's very fiery rhetoric at the UN General Assembly may have given the wrong impression? No, I don't think it was uh, fiery. I think it was uh, sincere. It's uh, our message. Uh, he uh, is a president that likes to speak clear. To, uh, to tell Brazilians and people from uh, all the world what we stand for uh, in a very uh, transparent manner. So, uh, and this is who we are. Uh, that's what he, uh, he presented. And we're convinced this is a message of a country that uh, wants and can engage much more with the world than, uh, previous, uh, than previous governments. We uh, have this total uh, open and transparent uh, attitude to, to cooperation, environment on, or any other matter and uh, we are we are in, we are out in the world to to be who we are and not to be uh, something else and not to pretend to be something else